Um, thank you, Mike, of course. Thank you, uh, Sunshot. And uh, thank you, everyone, for having me. Um, you know, it's funny, uh, for you out-of-towners, the people that live here, we get this pitch a lot. Everyone tries to tell us that they're going to change the world, right? And they're going to do it through, like, uh, cloud computing or some type of chat app or some way to share cat videos, <laughs> right? But you guys here are actually changing the world. Yeah, it's okay to share cat videos, I'm just saying. <laughs> so can I just get a round of applause for actually changing the world? <laughs> Thank you. So um, I do, I am here for a confession too. Um, I, I am not a solar roller yet, but uh, you know, in my early days, I used to be kind of afraid of our new energy economy and what to do with this energy crisis. Um, and this picture always really scared me, right, whenever I saw it. And it's funny because I felt like I kind of had my head in the sand about the issue, and I was kind of ignoring it a little bit. And I don't know about you guys, but you know, when you watch the, the, the news or something like that, um, it seems like these people that are talking on camera don't really understand the issue or they're just kind of negative about it, right? They'll say like, oh, well, solar doesn't work at night, so that's not going to work, right? Or wind energy uh, is, is intermittent, right? It doesn't work at all. Um, you know, re uh, geothermal is interesting, but it only really works if you have like a volcano in your backyard or something like that, right? Um, and I felt like the, the advice that I was getting is just like, just keep driving your SUV, don't worry about it, right? Can you believe people drive those things? Anyway, um, and uh, just keep driving your SUV and keep trying to just break the internet, right? <laughs> don't worry about it. Um, but you know, I was, I, I was thinking like, wait, wait, hold on, right? There's gotta be a way, right? And what's neat is we've, um, been doing crowdsourcing for a while. And uh, what, what's funny is we were actually just talking about this is we actually don't get to talk to the crowd as much as you would think. We're kind of off in the woods trying to build software. Um, and events like this are really exciting because we get to actually meet these people, these tinkerers, right? People like you um, are actually ignoring Kim Kardashian for a few minutes and trying to solve this problem, right? And it's really exciting to be around you. Um, you know, people like you are out in the garages tinkering, working on solar panels and inverters while everyone else is still driving their, their Hummers or whatever, right? And I've started to realize that solar is a really awesome time to be in solar right now, right? Um, I was just looking for an excuse to use that photo. Yeah. <laughs> like, even if you're not into Star Wars, this is awesome, right? You can be into music or Star Wars. But solar is really exciting, right? I mean, it's really freaking amazing. And I think that there's cracks forming in this argument that we have to use fossil fuels for our future. And I know you guys are probably convinced of these things, but like me, just Joe homeowner, like I'm still like getting up to speed, so bear with me. Um, so for example, I, I, I didn't realize this, but uh, usually in an economic downturn, we see an increase in CO2 output. But last year, we had, um, I'm sorry, <laughs> there's a decrease in CO2 output. Um, but last year, in 2014, um, the world economic uh, output grew by 3%, and CO2 emissions actually leveled off for the first time. I mean, that's awesome. Yes. I start finding these things, it's amazing. I mean, China's emissions fell by 2%, even as the economy grew by 4%. <laughs> Um, Two-thirds of all solar capacity has been installed since 2011. So that's 20 gigawatts in over 800,000 solar projects across the country. So what normally took four decades now just took four years to triple, right? I mean, that's amazing. That's like a revolution, right? Um, you know, solar energy employment in the U.S. has increased by 20%. So that's equal to about 50,000 jobs, right? I mean, if it wasn't for solar, a lot of us probably wouldn't even be here right now, right? and sunshine. Um, another one that I love, a PV system is installed somewhere every four minutes, right? So by the time I'm done, we'll have three more systems added to our network. And if we increase, if we keep increasing actually, 
uh, by 2016, I think that brings us down to 20 seconds, right? And I'm kind of hoping that some of the winners today will help us bring that number down even more, right? I mean, come on. <laughs> Two seconds, one second, right? A couple milliseconds, all right. Um, another thing that really helped me bring my head out of sand, and I don't know if you can see that that well. Oh, that came out terrible. Okay, anyway. Um, it looks good on, on my screen here, the nice retina. But uh, uh, did anyone see Elon Musk's presentation of the Powerwall? Okay, so you know what I'm talking about. Um, he put up a picture of the United States, and before I saw this picture, guys, I thought that to power the United States with solar, we would have to coat like everything in solar, the entire world, just for the U.S. But this slide actually, and, and when it looks right, it's a map of the United States, and this blue dot is all we need, right, to power the entire United States. That's like Delaware and Rhode Island, right? Like, we don't even need those states. Let's just get rid of them. <laughs> but no, really, we can just put them on the roofs of uh, all these homes, and we're good to go. Um, and again, this, when I saw this slide, this really pulled my head out of the sand. It was very exciting. Um, so another thing I have to tell you is I finally switched from an electric car. Very excited. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. And um, when, when I was helping the electrician install the 220 outlet on the side of my house, we were kind of laughing, thinking like, gosh, you know, with a gasoline-powered car, you don't really have much choice, do you? You don't really have any choice on how to power it, right? The only option is, well, I mean, you can buy gas from all these guys, right? But at the end of the day, it all comes from, comes from the ground, right? We don't really have any option. I mean, I can't really put uh, an oil derrick in my backyard and start refining gasoline in the basement, right? Um, and I think that illusion of choice is really interesting. I mean, basically, with fossil fuels, we have an elite group of people, right? They control all the information and most of the, the uh, world's oil supply, right? Um, and it, it's, not, it's not a crowd that's participating in our energy future, right? It's just a bunch of these dudes, right? Um, I love that war room picture, by the way. If you, if you get a chance to go to Airbnb, you should ch check out their recreation of that, of that meeting room, by the way. Um, so where was I? Oh, so, and, and that's the funny thing is like, I, I, I'm really interested in our new energy economy because everyone it can participate now, right? Um, I mean, we, we have people that can um, participate in energy innovation, like you guys, right? Um, Anyone in the crowd can produce energy now, and of course everyone in the crowd can consume the energy now. So, um, you know, the power of the crowd has changed how we produce energy. And uh, I think it's interesting, like someone from Kazakhstan can help collaborate with a guy in Kentucky on building a better solar panel, right? And, um, you know, we, we actually starting to see a lot of this innovation uh, worldwide, right? Um, we have a group in Australia called um, the Cerebral Palsy Alliance. And they ran a challenge worldwide where they asked people to help, um, help come up with better ideas to live with cerebral palsy all over the world, right? And uh, we had a guy in Turkey that said he had a really difficult time getting around in his electric wheelchair. And um, one of his complaints, of course, was that it was hard to just find an outlet to charge. And when he did find an outlet, the power might be inconsistent or it was uh, you know, kind of dirty power. And um, so he posted that challenge, and we had a team out of uh, University of Virginia, a student team, actually build an electric wheelchair, or solar-powered wheelchair. Well, I, did I miss it? Hold on. There we go. Um, they actually built a solar-powered wheelchair for him. And this is like the first time anyone's ever even tried that, which is amazing. And that's, that's the guy. He's like driving around. <laughs> How awesome is that, right? <laughs> And look, Demo Day is kind of the same thing, right? Like, everyone from across the country can participate online. We all post our photos and our pitches, and um, everyone can vote. And then we all get together here and work on the solution together, right? Um, so I'm, I'm actually really excited about our new energy future. And thanks to the crowd, I'm starting to actually get my head out of the sand. And uh, I'm pretty optimistic about trying to solve this energy crisis. I feel like it's much more solvable, at least in my eyes, what I understand about it, than ever before. And we have like millions 
and millions of tinkerers from all over the world to help us. So I would like to ask all of us to use the crowd to get everyone else's head out of the sand. Thank you.